How you feel about your success in three months, right? I ain't gonna lie. Before becoming one of the newest driving forces behind the Brooklyn drill rap scene, Kyle Rich was born Kyle Henry Fashan on January 22nd, 2003 to a pair of African parents in the neighborhood of Brownsville, New York. And while Kyle has always gotten along with his folks, they haven't exactly been the biggest supporters of his career. In point of fact, they hardly know anything about rap music at all. Hey, they know I rap, but they don't yeah. know how lit I am. Oh, weird, bro. Like, for me, they ain't really support me too, bro. Yeah. And it probably didn't help matters that, as a kid, Kyle often found himself out on the nearby streets of Brownsville, getting into all kinds of trouble, sometimes until 5 or 6 a.m. Whenever he'd finally get home in the early hours of the morning, he says he could always see the disappointment etched on his parents' faces. Kind of how I feel after my parents watch these videos I host. <clears throat> as such, when it comes to the inner dynamics of Kyle's family, things have gotten a little complicated over the years. While the young rapper claims to love his mother and little sister to death, he's gotten a far more contentious relationship with his father. My dad, bro, mad strict, bro, like, yeah. the definition of tough love, bro, and I always think that I really love, bro, I just violent, my whole life, I mean, I really made me who I am right now. Throughout the course of his life and right up until the present day, Kyle's dad has never once told him that he loves him. Instead, he's chosen the path of tough love, hoping that discipline and a firm hand would keep his son on a straight and narrow path. Not that it ever actually worked. But I mean, hey, on a more positive note, Kyle's dad was also the one who introduced him to rap music in the first place. As a kid, his pops used to throw on classic artists like Biggie, Tupac, Jay-Z, and more. After being exposed to the work of some of the most talented rappers of all time, it inspired Kyle to begin writing bars of his own. And he picked up a pen for the first time at the super young age of only seven years old. I was seven, but I was in the back of my dad V. Mm -hmm. For me, and I just seen like a call. I just started writing about it, bro. That was the moment I knew like, I fell in love with music, bro. Despite having this deep-seated appreciation and love for hip-hop as young as he was, Kyle was too nervous to show off his talents, and it wouldn't be until much more recently that music became a crucial part of his life. Instead, as already hinted at, Kyle would find himself in the streets. In fact, Kyle barely remembers a time in his life when he wasn't hustling. Despite living in one of the worst neighborhoods in Brooklyn, Kyle was always still finding a way to fill his pockets. Whether it was selling weed on his block every day or even selling water in front of the building, he was known for being the last outside every day. A true hustler, if you would. But the older he got and the worse things he saw, the more he realized that he couldn't keep moving in the same circles. And while Kyle may not have really had the support of his parents to keep himself out of trouble, he did have the support of his friends and neighborhood. Once he finished high school, his older associates, recognizing his potential to do something special with his life, encouraged him to pursue more creative outlets like college, or better yet, music. One of those two things would pan out. The other, not exactly. Looking to act on the advice of his elders, Kyle headed off to college first. But I'll be honest, it didn't exactly last all that long. About two weeks into his collegiate career, Kyle was smoking by himself in his dorm room when the fire alarm set off and drew a whole bunch of attention down his head. We've all been there, Kyle. I feel you. This resulted in campus police raiding him and finding all the weed he was selling. Afterwards, he found himself getting kicked out of school. Go to college, get out of here, and do what you gotta do, bro. I did that drill for me. I was in there for like a couple weeks. I got kicked out. I ain't gonna lie. You got kicked out of college? Yeah, bro. For what? I, mean, I was smoking, bro. They called me smoking. Oh. So smart shit. With college no longer an option, Kyle returned to Brooklyn and switched up his course of action, dropping his first musical project, an EP titled Everything Dead at the tail end of August 2021. Boasting collaborations alongside Jen Carter and Dee Bazilli, this would become the public's first taste of the crew that we would soon come to know as 41. Around this time, Kyle was doing everything he could to pull off a win for himself, and with nothing to lose, he recorded his EP just to see what would happen. Unfortunately, it wasn't much. Everything Dead failed to find much of an audience through those final months of 2021, but that wouldn't remain the case forever. In the meantime, Kyle carried on undeterred, fleshed out the 41 crew, which is a reference to someone everyone in the group likes to say, namely that there are 41 different ways to get paid. How did all y'all kind of come together as a, as like a collective? I ain't gonna lie for me, we were just a bunch of with the same dream. Okay. You know I mean? So we just brought that shit together, kept building, and eventually it got the way side right now. We mm. knew each other for a minute too. Okay. So. okay. I mean, he was doing this longer than others and stuff. Gangsta. The collective's beginning started a few years earlier when Kyle teamed up with his childhood friend, Jerry West, and the two of them asked themselves one simple question. What are we going to do with our lives? It didn't take them long to settle on the idea of trying their hand at making music. And from there, they grew the collective by adding further artists to their ranks. I'm talking everyone from Tata to Jen Carter to D. Bills and Jay Galato, many of whom Kyle had known since his earliest days in his neighborhood. 
Y'all a group or y'all just artists that collaborate with each other? I mean, we 41, but we individual artists. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we mainly started as like a group. Type and, then, of thing. and then y'all broke off branch yeah, off the other everybody shit. got they like their own stuff we came now that he finally had some real backup to help him accomplish his goals the next step in kyle rich's career was to break through into the mainstream and he'd do so with a trifecta of singles released in the span of just two months in early 2022 i'm talking about 41 freestyle 41 cypher and beam these three songs blew up in large part to kyle's decision to use tiktok as a marketing tool by releasing snippets of each track on the platform ahead of time where they'd quickly earn hundreds of thousands of views and pump up his fan base for the release of the full versions over on YouTube and other digital streaming platforms. When the music video to these tracks finally dropped, almost all of them would rack up seven digits in terms of view counts, and this unprecedented success would carry on throughout the year, leading up to the release of Kyle's personal favorite of his own work, Spin in 2. Much like the tracks that came before, it would only take a few months for that bad boy to earn around 2 million views. And just like that, Kyle Rich had finally arrived. Having gone from somewhere around 10,000 followers on Instagram to more than 50,000 in the opening months of 2022, Kyle Rich understood that he couldn't let up. In May of 2022, he popped up alongside his associates Jen Carter and Tata to drop an on-the-radar cypher that would go widely viral, earning over 4.5 million views on YouTube. Having now officially established himself as a force to be reckoned with, Taking over the whole drill scene became his next course of action. In order to do so, Kyle aligned himself with Right or Wrong KVH Entertainment, the talent agency behind other popular rappers like Pop Smoke, Jake Wapo, Molly G, and Blockwork. Now, of course, sometimes aligning yourself with outside forces can bring unexpected results. And while this partnership has been unquestionably good for Kyle's career, his newfound association also resulted in a series of beefs with artists like Shy K and V Love, who were feuding with the higher ups at KVH. That whole Shy K shit is dumb, bro. It's just, that shit is just mad media shit, bro. That shit mad stupid, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I don't know Shy K. Shy K don't know me, bro. Yeah. Shit is dumb, bro. For now, however, Kyle is doing his best to ignore all the hate and concentrate on what the future has in store for him. Like, say, meeting with a whole bunch of labels in hopes of finding a deal that makes sense for his growing career. Something that seems to have finally happened when he teamed up with Republic Records at the end of the summer. And sure, there have been bumps in the road along the way, like when Kyle got locked up in May of this year under dubious circumstances for a firearm. Thankfully, he wouldn't stay locked up for long, and within a few days, he was out on bail. Sadly, however, Kyle was arrested once again for possession of another firearm in late September. He was bailed out this time by the higher-ups at Right or Wrong KVH for 50k. I kind of like hearing that because a lot of times rappers getting locked up and the label does nothing to help the artist, so I'm glad they bailed him out. According to the man himself, whatever trouble he found himself in still has to work itself out through the court systems, so we may learn more about what happened in the coming weeks or even months. Now, as for when Kyle Rich will feel once and for all like he officially made it, well, he says that won't happen until he and everyone around him are winning. And until that day comes, Kyle Rich, along with the entire 41 crew, will continue grinding to turn that dream into reality. But that's a story for another time and another place. I mean, after all, this is before they were famous. Thank you, everybody, for watching today's episode. And before you head out, ask yourselves this one question. Would you rather be a moderately successful solo rapper or make it big as one of many in a famous hip hop collective? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And don't forget in the meantime to like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure that you never miss a new episode. And if you'd like to check out other entries into this series, then be sure to check out our looks into the come ups of Hip Boy, Spaz Drilly, and Marquise Jackson. My name is Clyde Smith, and I'll see you guys in another video.